Yesterday, SpaceX unveiled a captivating video encapsulating key moments from the second Starship flight test while officially confirming plans for a third flight. At dawn, from the gateway to Mars, the launch of Starship's second flight test, SpaceX shared. The footage showcases the awe-inspiring ascent of the first stage Super Heavy booster and the Starship spacecraft, marking a significant step towards potential missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The video provides a close-up view of the pivotal stage separation, a critical maneuver where the upper stage Starship disengages from the booster, followed by the dramatic conclusions for both components. In addition to these highlights, viewers are treated to behind-the-scenes glimpses of mission operators and SpaceX's visionary leader Elon Musk closely monitoring the mission's progression. Despite the mid-air explosions, SpaceX deems the mission a success, highlighting the achievement of stage separation, a crucial step that eluded completion in the initial test flight back in April. What we did with this second flight will provide invaluable data to continue rapidly developing Starship, SpaceX said in comments accompanying the video. The towering Starship, standing at 400 feet or 122 meters, generates a staggering 17 million pounds of thrust at launch, more than double the power of the Saturn V rocket that propelled Apollo astronauts to the moon five decades ago, and nearly twice that of NASA's space launch system, tested in an uncrewed mission last year. Looking ahead, SpaceX is gearing up for the third Starship test flight, with Elon Musk anticipating readiness before the year's end. However, the ultimate green light rests with the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA for short, currently conducting an investigation into the previous month's flight. Once concluded, the FAA will determine any conditions necessary for the issuance of a launch permit. While a flight isn't anticipated this month, SpaceX's Starbase is gearing up for a series of ground tests in the near future. New road closures have been scheduled, one on the 8th of December from 4pm to 9pm, and two more on the 11th and 12th, both from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening. Additionally, this week saw the delivery of liquid nitrogen and methane trucks to the tank farm, possibly in preparation for Ship 28. Currently housed inside the high bay, Starship 28 is undergoing preparations for static fire tests, with all its engines already installed. Equipment for lifting the Starship onto the suborbital launch pad has arrived, and the ship is expected to be transported to the launch site by Friday evening. Static fire tests may commence as early as Monday. Booster 10, meanwhile, will need to wait for the complete maintenance of the OLM. The third flight of SpaceX's giant Starship vehicle may be considerably more ambitious and complex than the first two. That mission could involve a propellant transfer test. Both NASA and SpaceX view off-Earth propellant transfer as a key enabler of bold exploration feats, such as the establishment of crewed outposts on the Moon and Mars. Rockets and spacecraft burn through most of their fuel just to get out of Earth's deep gravity well so they'll need to top off their tanks to journey to other solar system destinations. While Russia regularly refuels the ISS with hypergolic propellants, these can be stored at pretty much any temperature for months or years on end. Cryogenic propellants, which are much more efficient, usually can't last more than a few hours in space before they boil off. For both of NASA's HLS landers, they will need to develop technologies to extend the lifespan of their propellants propellants. SpaceX with methane and oxygen, and Blue Origin with hydrogen and oxygen, as well as transferring it between spacecraft and orbit. While Starship Flight 3 won't feature any vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle refueling, it will begin the journey with a tank-to-tank -tank transfer of liquid oxygen. How we expect this to happen is, once in its coast phase, SpaceX will move 10 metric tons of propellant from the Starship upper stage's main tank to its header tank located at the nose of the vehicle. While small compared to the 15 or so tanker spacecraft needed to refuel an entire Starship HLS lander, 
This test is a big step forward in developing a required technology for NASA's Artemis III landing. Without it, there is no chance of completing any landings in the agency's timelines. For the test to succeed, Starship would need to reach low Earth orbit, something SpaceX is yet to achieve. The first attempt on the 20th of April this year ended with both stages of the rocket exploding after attempting to separate a few minutes after launch. The second high-altitude flight test on the 18th of November was more successful, becoming the first to achieve hot staging separation. This saw the top part of the rocket separate from the Super Heavy booster using its onboard engines. However, both parts of the rocket were ultimately lost. The in-flight fuel transfer will be the first test of a system designed to eventually allow Starship to refuel from an external tanker in Earth's orbit. The goal is to advance cryogenic fluid transfer and fill level gauging technology through technology risk assessment, design, and prototype testing, and in-orbit demonstration, NASA said. The demonstration will decrease key risks for large-scale propellant transfer in the lead-up to future human spaceflight missions. In other interesting news, Sierra Space, a commercial space company, is gearing up for a momentous event as it prepares to conduct its largest ever burst test of its inflatable, expandable space station technology. This groundbreaking endeavor is a crucial step in Sierra Space's collaboration with Blue Origin on the development of Orbital Reef. Our team is finalizing preparations for the first ever full-scale ultimate burst pressure test of our LIFE or Life Habitat this month at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. The test article has two metallic blanking plates to support windows and are specifically designed for maximum performance, the company said on X.com on the 8th of December. The company plans to stress test a full-scale version of its life habitat structure, pushing it to failure under pressure for the first time in history. The life habitat is made of high-strength soft goods materials such as sewn and woven fabrics that become rigid structures when pressurized in space. Sierra Space has previously conducted five stress tests on smaller versions of the habitat, but this upcoming test will be 18 times larger with nearly 300 cubic meters of pressurized volume. Sierra Space's expandable space station module technology is highly scalable and flexible, compatible with various launch vehicle fairing sizes. The soft goods structures are packed inside conventional rocket fairings and inflate to their full capacity in space. This means that low volume launches can transform into high volume space stations. The volume of the module will always be the square of its expansion diameter. For example, a 2 by 5 times expandable configuration would result in a volume of 6.25 times that of a rocket fairing. According to Sierra Space CEO Tom Weiss, their inflatable space station module technology offers the largest in-space pressured volume, the best unit economics per on-orbit volume, and the lowest launch and operating costs. This positions Sierra Space as the leader in microgravity research and product development, providing customers with an attractive return on investment. The full-scale life habitat has a height of 20 and a half feet up to 29 and a half feet, including ground support equipment and a diameter of 27. Its volume is approximately 10,000 cubic feet, or 283.17 cubic meters. Currently, all components and ground support equipment are in the integration phase at the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. The next steps involve integrating the soft goods into the test stand, followed by transportation to the testing location using the NASA KAMAG transporter tractor. The testing will take place adjacent to the flame trench of the Saturn 1 1B test stand, where NASA tested rockets for the Apollo program. Setup, calibration of sensors and cameras, and operational run-throughs will prepare for the full-scale UBP test that will be carried out later this month. The objectives of this test include refining Sierra Space's technical approach to safety factors and structural integrity, as well as advancing its manufacturing processes based on insights gained from previous tests. The company's confidence in undertaking the full 
full-scale burst test has been bolstered by the recent successes of subscale tests. The Life Habitat's engineering is truly remarkable. Its high-strength soft goods materials, primarily Vectrin, undergo a transformation into rigid structures when pressurized, reaching a strength five times that of steel under normal operating pressure. This surpasses safety standards, ensuring enduring performance throughout the station's lifespan. Moreover, the restraints layer's design incorporates a bladder for controlled inflation and pressurization during the ultimate burst pressure test failure. This additional feature fortifies its resilience. Strategically placed metallic blanking plates within the restraint layer enable seamless integration of essential elements like windows, airlocks, and robotic arms. These components blend into the soft goods layer with minimal impact on performance or durability, showcasing a sophisticated design that augurs well for the habitat's functionality and adaptability. The innovation and resilience embedded within the life habitat structure set a promising precedent for future advancements in space habitation and exploration. And that's about it for today's episode, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up, and happy holidays.